so with that brief interlude about the, the general class details, let's get back to talking about institutions and why they are important. Um, we did mention before the class details um, that having a strong public sector to kind of um, provide the foundation for this invisible hand um, type of private market is important. And so these, these institutions matter. Um, again, as we've been talking, we have these, these ideas of institutions. It's not a building that exists somewhere in the world. It's just rules that determine how people interact. Um, they can be formal. The IRS has a whole bunch of rules that determine how we should interact with each other. And when we go to the store, we get taxed because there's a tax code that determines that. And that is set by kind of officials at the IRS. Um, but we also have informal rules. Um, when two people crash into each other in a doorway, there are informal rules of who goes first and who gives way to the other person. Um, there's no ministry for going through doorways. It's just a thing that exists informally and everybody kind of adheres to it. So that's this idea of like there's the split between informal and formal institutions. So capitalist institutions, if we remember, we have these three different things. We have private property, um, we have markets inside, and then we have firms inside of markets and they're all interacting with each other. And so that's this, is, that's this idea of, of institutions here. Um, but what an important question for all of this is um, democracy is a system of institutions and it kind of is a way of undergirding this whole system. If we go look back here, we have private property. Some sort of, of institutional system needs to provide for private property and provide for safe markets and provide for firms that work well. And so is democracy really necessary for capitalism? Um, and if we were in person, we would have a big, vigorous debate about this. Um, we're not in person, so feel free to answer this question in your weekly report if you want to tackle this. Cool. Do it. Um, because it's a fascinating question. And the data is somewhat mixed on this. If you look at this chart here from the, the core readings that you had, um, you have a whole bunch of different countries here and their um, GDP per capita over time. And if you look... Um, you have a whole bunch of different countries here that are fairly low GDP, um, except one had this huge skyrocket um, development in GDP starting in the 80s, um, up through the 90s and up to 2015, and that is South Korea. And nowadays they are a democracy, but back here, back when they were making these huge strides in economic development, they were a military dictatorship essentially. Um, they were not a democracy, but they were able to still develop super rapidly and create all sorts of, of strong capitalist institutions and then later democratize. And so in this case, they weren't necessarily a democracy and democracy didn't, wasn't necessary to cause rapid econ economic growth here. Um, also, when we talk about democracy, there's no one definition of democracy. Um, you can have like India is the world's largest democracy. They have a billion people, but their democratic system does not look like the system in the United States. It does not look like the system in Germany. It does not look like the system in France. Everybody has different ways of structuring their political systems. Um, and so what the main question is, isn't um, is democracy necessary? It's which democratic institutions are necessary for capitalism to work or which general political institutions are necessary. And so for capitalism to work well, you need to have some reason to innovate and create new stuff so that you can then sell that. And so um, you need some way of creating incentives for innovation. And so if a political system helps allow for that, um, for instance, having secure private property and competitive markets. Um, so if you have some political system that allows or that discourages monopolies, that makes it so that there are, you can secure your, your stuff and there's kind of the rule of law so that if people violate your private property you can get recompense for it um, then that provides incentives for innovation you can develop as a capitalist country um, in order to have good economic growth you also need efficient firms and so democracy can help with this as well um, it can um, lead to competent leadership which then lets companies create goods at a low cost and they can sell stuff cheaply and, and that helps with with economic growth here um, if you have good public policy, then you can create kind of a world where these conditions here, having good strong incentives for innovation, having good efficient firms, then you can create those things. 
um, and foster kind of an environment for this this type of economic growth here. And so um, having good public policy is, a, is an essential part of this institutional mix here. And then finally, um, having some sort of provision of public goods. Um, the backdrop for this whole capitalist system and the invisible hand working um, is kind of the public sector providing lots of stuff. Um, not only providing kind of a way to have private property and the rule of law, but also providing like roads and electricity and basic utilities and just kind of the general playing field for doing economic transactions. Um, what happens is if, if there are gaps in the provision of things, um, where the private sector is not going to intervene um, or not going to do something because it's not profitable, then if the public sector steps in, then that provides kind of better access to the market. Um, a good example of this is with like the mail system. Um, if you live in a very remote place in the middle of Alaska, um, it's expensive to receive packages through UPS and FedEx because um, they're private companies and they have, they have to consider costs. They have to consider um, all sorts of transportation costs and it's really hard to get to you. And sometimes they'll refuse service to certain areas just because it's hard to do. Um, but then you have a public sector organization like the U.S. Postal Service where they have like a constitutional mandate to reach everybody in the country. And so they fill in those gaps where private companies won't go. Um, or the private companies won't do it because it's not profitable. The whole purpose of having a public sector provide public goods or fill in these gaps is so that everybody can have access to this stuff. And so essentially, if you can get some sort of political system, regardless of if it's officially labeled a democracy or not, that, has, that provides some sort of incentives for innovation, helps firms be efficient, helps public policy be structured in a way that encourages this, and then provides some sort of public goods, then you have all of the conditions for kind of good, strong, rapid economic growth. And that's kind of what we care about. We don't really care about the, or in the economic world, we don't really care about the exact form of the government. If it's a parliamentary democracy or a constitutional monarchy or a congressional democracy or anything like that, we don't care about that necessarily. We mostly care about do these um, mix, does this mixture of institutions here encourage growth and development? And so that's the main thing we care about. And that's why institutions are important. Um, as long as you can make sure that whatever institutional mix you have is kind of humming along nicely, um, then you should be pretty well off. Um, so that, that's our main question and our main concern as public uh, administrators and public policy people is, are these types of institutions working to provide kind of the greatest access to people to the market?